the really big change in Sweden is that there is so many more highly educated women than there are men now. Um, so women outnumber men very much. And as a result of this, um, the majority of highly educated women now have a child, so they form this partnership with men who have lower education than them. So they have uh, high school education or lower. And then the interesting change for men has been that um, now that there are so many more highly educated women, more and more men have a highly educated partner. So instead of the majority of men having a lower educated partner, now they have a highly educated partner. So this kind of gender education change has changed the dynamics of who forms unions with whom. Men who have the highest income are those who are most likely to have a child and those who have the lowest income are those who are least likely to have a child. So it's really like a clear linear trend in terms of how much money men earn. I guess like a good reason might just be yeah, that people have high aspirations for what they want to be able to have uh, when, as a family in terms of like living standard of providing things for their children and so on. So maybe it's just really important to people to really have a very high joint income when they're thinking about forming a family. But I think it's important to understand that it's like this field of study is um, connected to income. So like among lower paid men, especially men with a technical degree, are those who remain childless maybe they have either less opportunities to like meet women or less interest in forming a family or are less interesting to women. Maybe there's like some cultural forces at play.